52. Benzene can be prepared from acetylene. And then they give us this balanced equation. So we have three acetylene, C2H2 gas, and it comes to equilibrium with benzene, which is C6H6 gas. Determine the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius and at 80, 85, 850 degrees Celsius. Is the reaction spontaneous at either of these temperatures? And then why is all acetylene not found as benzene? Okie dokie. So, seems like we have a couple of things going on here. We ultimately have to find out the equilibrium constant at two temperatures, 25 degrees Celsius and 850 degrees Celsius. Now, remember that the equilibrium constant is just a K value, right? It's capital K. K for Christina. That's me. But in this case, K for equilibrium constant. Now, it doesn't really matter what K we're searching for here, right? There's so many of them. Ka, Kb, Kc. Uh, I could probably guess that we're going to solve for a Kp because I do see gases and gases always have pressures uh, to them. So Kp, but I'm just going to leave it as K for now. Now, in order to find out an equilibrium constant from temperatures, this formula is ultimately going to be used. So I highly recommend you either memorize this formula or maybe your teacher or professor might give it to you on a test or quiz. But equilibrium constant equals E, that's the button on the calculator, all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's see what we know. Now, the R value is always a constant value. R is always going to be 8.314 in this case because we're dealing with energy values. Now, the unit for R is joule per mole times Kelvin. And maybe I will try to bring this over a little bit just so that we don't run out of room. There we go. So mole times Kelvin. So the R value is going to tell you what units are allowed. So for the delta G, joules are allowed. And for the temperature, Kelvin is allowed. Now we're going to have to do this twice because I have two different temperatures, right? They want us to find out that equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius. And then I have to do the same thing for 850 degrees Celsius. So the, the main thing here is let's just convert those two temperatures, right? I have to do it at 25 degrees Celsius and I have to do it at 850 degrees Celsius. Well, Celsius to Kelvin, that's an easy conversion, right? All I can, all I have to do is just add 273. More specifically, you could add 273.15. So in this case, room temp, which is 25, turns out to being 298.15. If we add those, and now for the 250, I'm just going to take, or not the 250, the 850, I'm going to take 850 plus 273.15, and that's the other temperature, 1,123.15. Okay. So now, the main thing is that I need to find out that delta G value. Now, a lot of you might say that, hey, we can go in the back of the textbook, get those delta G values, products minus reactants, and that be the end. Now, the thing is, is that you could only do that for the room temperature, you know, the room temperature equilibrium constant, because those values in the back of the book are specifically only for room temperature. Since we have 850 degrees Celsius, I can't take the delta G values from there. So I have to use another formula. So what's the other formula that links a delta G with the temperature? It's this one down here. Delta G equals delta H, the enthalpy, minus the temperature times the entropy, delta S. But the thing is, is that I don't know what the delta H is, and I don't know what the delta S is. But that's why those values you could go in the back of the textbook and use those values to find out what the overall enthalpy is and the overall entropy is of the equation. So now I guess let's work with the delta H's first, right? Here I went to the back of the textbook to the appendix values to find out what the delta H value is for the acetylene and what the delta H value is for the benzene. But now how am I going to find the delta H for the whole entire reaction? Well, that's another formula. That's this right here. So the whole equation, delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rx and its reaction, 
is the sum, so that this little symbol means just add them up, the sum of all of your delta H products minus the sum of all your delta H reactants. And remember that these values are only for one of your substance. So always look at that uh, coefficient, right? You have three acetylenes. So I have to take this value and times it by three. But for the benzene, I only had one of them. So I'll just times this by one. So essentially it would be the same number, right? So the overall value for the products would be 82.927. But now I just have to find out what the overall value is for the acetylene. So I can say three times 227.4 and I get 682.2. And these values are now going to be put into my equation. I didn't have to add anything together because I only had one product and one reactant in this example. So the delta H for the whole entire reaction is 82.927 minus the reactants, which is the 682.2. Okay, let's do delta H for the whole entire reaction equals 82.927 minus the 682.2. So I get a negative. 599.273 units would just be kilojoules because the, the numbers that you multiply in the front, those are your mole values. So mole cancels out and you're just left with kilojoules. Okay, so we found the delta H for that equation. Now we have to do the same thing for the delta S's. So I found them in the back of the textbook and I can use the same formula, which was this one, right? But instead of saying, I have all H's, I could get rid of the H's, and I say, hey, I have all S's. So in order to find the delta S of the reaction, I'm gonna take the sum of the S products minus the S reactants. Do the same thing. So I take my S values, times this one by three, and times this one by one, because I only had one of them in my balanced equation. So this would be the same number, 269.2. The other one, 200.9, times three, and I get 602.7. So products minus reactants, delta S for the whole entire reaction is, uh, we get 269.2 minus the uh, 602.7. Delta S, the entropy for the whole entire reaction would be 269.2 minus that answer. Just going to grab it. And I get negative 333. Whoop, 333.5. Okie dokie. Uh, units for this is joules per Kelvin. Remember, the mole cancels out because we times by those coefficients. Okay, so we have the overall delta H, we have the overall delta S. Now let's find out the two temperatures. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video uh, if you need to, because I'm just gonna erase some things. I'm going to erase all the work here. I'm only gonna leave the answers, okay? So if you need to write anything down, just please pause the video and then they're going bye-bye right now. So the only thing that I basically need is the delta H value, which we found out, and the delta S one, because now we're gonna split the screen. So I'm gonna take this, and I guess I could copy this, right? Actually, we'll just keep this over here. And let's split this, Weep. And this side will be the 25 degree side. And this side will be the 850. 850. Okay. So for each one of them, I have to do delta G equals H minus T delta S. Now, the only thing is delta H was in kilojoules. Delta S was in joules. 
right? In order to use this equation, I have to first get the same unit of energy. Now, ultimately, look at the equation that we need to put in, right? In this case, the delta G value has to be in joules because the R value, one of the units is joules. So it would make sense to just quickly convert the kilojoules into joules and leave the, you know, the delta S value. So how would I go from kilojoules to joules? Well, you would times by a thousand. You could similarly just take the decimal, move it over to the right three spots. So instead of having the decimal here, whoop, oh no, I guess I'll just go in like that. Boop. Instead of having the decimal over there, the decimal is now at the end, so I don't even have to put the decimal. And then I just drop my kilojoules and there we go. Now I'm ready to go. So let's do it for the 25 degrees one. Delta G equals delta H, which is now negative 599,273 minus the temperature. This has to be in Kelvin. 25 degrees was the 298. So I have to put in 298.15. And then I'm going to times it by the delta S value which is a negative 333.5. Okay. Now let's just set up the other delta G one, right? So delta G for this one would be the same delta H, negative 599273 minus, now I'm going to use the 850 degrees Celsius. So that's 1123.15 times by the delta S, negative 333.5. Plug these into the calculator all in one shot, and we are good to go for here. So for the 25 degrees Celsius one, I'm going to say negative 599.273 minus 298.15 times negative 333.5. I'm just making sure that I plugged in everything correctly, and I get negative 499.839. Point nine seven five, and that's joules. So we could already answer these questions. Is the reaction spontaneous at either of these temperatures? Keep in mind that a delta G tells you if you're spontaneous or not, and specifically a delta G of a negative value. So since this is a negative delta G value, this is going to be spontaneous. So we answered that question already for this, for this temperature. Let's do the same thing for the other one. So I'm going to take the negative 599.273 minus 1123.15, 1123, yep, that looks good to me, times the negative 33.5 and another negative value. So delta G here would be negative 224712.48. Notice how I'm not rounding because this is not the final answer, right? We still want that equilibrium constant, but it's still in joules and it's a negative value. So this is also spontaneous. Okay. So let's box that off. Now let's find that equilibrium constant. Now we're going to take this into consideration. So if I just plug in my values for my 25 degree one, K equals E raised to the negative fraction. This is the whole value that's going in there. So negative 499, 839.975 divided by those two values on the bottom, right? 8.314 and the, the temperature here, which was the 25 degrees Celsius, I have to put in the 298.15. Let's just set up the same one for the other side. K equals E raised to the negative exponent. This delta G is now going in there. 224.712.48. And now I have the two values. 8.314, that's constant. And I need to include the 850 degrees Celsius one. So that's the 1,123.15. Uh, 
Okay, now for each one of them, I would just get this to being one number. Simplify this out, and then I can take the e raised to it. So k equals e raised to the negative times a negative is a positive. So I'll just put negative and then this value. I love the TI-84 or any of the TIs uh, that's a graphing calculator because I can just go up and grab the number that I want. Divide by 8.314, and then I'm going to press divide again by 298.15. And I get 201.64. With more numbers, I'm not going to round because that's not the answer. So when I take my E value, I'm going to use the whole value. K equals second LN. Grab that whole number. Whoa, a big, 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 big number. So K equals three point. We'll say, I guess we'll say 3.74 times 10 to the 87. Wow. <laughs> Huge value there. Now let's do the same thing for the 850 degrees Celsius. Oh boy. Um, just know that equilibrium constants have no units. So now let's see what this one single number is. So I'm going to say negative times a negative. Let's go up and find that number for the delta G. Here it is. Press enter. Divided by 8.314, I'm going to divide again by 1123.15. Okay. So I get a 24 point. I just want to make sure that I plugged everything in correctly. It looks all good to me. 24 point. We'll say zero, six, and then more numbers. So let's find out that equilibrium constant. Second LN, grab the whole number, press enter. Okay, two point. We'll say eight, three, two point eight, three times 10 to the 10th. And there is at, you know, there are your two equilibrium constants. The first one was at 25 degrees Celsius. And this one was at the 850 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Okay. So the final, final, final question is, why is all acetylene not found as benzene? Now, even though it seems at both temperatures, it's spontaneous, which means that there's no additional amount of external energy that is needed to make acetylene, to benzene, and the K value at 25 degrees Celsius is so large, that means that at room temperature, chances are majority of it is going to be converted into benzene. However, when you jack up the temperature, right, 850 degrees Celsius, the K value is starting to drop. It went from 10 to, to the 87th power to 10 to the only 10th. So it seems like as you increase the temperature, the K value, the equilibrium constant, is not favored towards the one side. So why is all acetylene not found as benzene? Well, chances are this is probably used at high temperatures. At higher temperatures, so at higher temperatures, the reaction is going to be slower because your K value is dropping. So as higher the temperature is, the K value is dropping. So the reaction is slower. So it requires a longer amount of time to convert the acetylene into benzene. And that's why not all acetylene is just being converted into benzene. Because at higher temperatures, it just the conversion is slower. So of course you're going to have some acetylene in there. But hopefully this helps you out. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And, you know, thanks for all your support. I really hope this is helping you. And let's keep studying hard. Let's keep learning. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay,